here's the story. Um, it's morning, Sunday morning on Memorial Day weekend. I got another chance to skip out, but now we've got an extra challenge. It looks like the rain might appear anytime. There's very dark skies over there, and it is scheduled to rain. So I thought I would back up to a tree, found this spot, found this park, back up to a tree, and just work straight out of my van. Okay, so the threat of rain is here. Um, I don't hear any thunder at all. I'm going to go ahead and set up, at least get the antenna up and or the cordage and practice that. So I am going to try to go as straight up as possible, get right into that branch about 35, 40 feet. I like the branches that are further out because I just want to go, oh, I don't want to go through all of that and then have my antenna bend over something. I'd rather it was on the outside and straight down. I'll tell you I'm having more fun throwing the beanbag into the tree. I swear it is like half it is like the part I like most now. I know it sounds weird. Um, I just got bit by two mosquitoes, so I don't know how I'm going to hold up. So, what happened was, I'm actually throwing this. First of all, the pack tenant is 41 feet, and it is actually not all the way to the top. So, what I did was, I, I thought I had a lot of cordage. I originally bought, I think, 250 feet, and I thought way too much, so I cut it down to something. I, don't, I didn't measure it. And so what I cut it down to was not enough. I really wish I hadn't done that. So one of my first throws, I threw it over a really, really high branch. And then it came down and the end was too short. I couldn't grab it. You have to have both ends. Otherwise, you can't pull it up. There's no way to pull up the antenna. So I started over and I realized I cannot throw it that high. So on my second throw or subsequent throw, I aimed lower. And it, when I aim lower, I'm at about 50 feet, 45 roughly, because the pack 10 is 40 feet, and it goes beyond that. So my compromise is 45, 50 feet. I think I'm getting 60, 65 or more with my full potential. I just don't have enough cordage. I've got my pack 10 Bungee cord has turned out to be very nice. All these little holes on the pack 10 very nice. Um, I am a lot more vertical now than I've ever been, so that'll be interesting. Only problem is I haven't heard any thunder, but it is sprinkling off and on. So the way I operate might be a little weird. I might run my coax. If I hear any thunder, I'm done. I'm quitting. I might run my coax right here to the van, but that's not too comfortable to operate like this. I was going to break in, but this guy doesn't stop talking. I am still having trouble making a single phone contact. Even when I try to break in to other people, I have messed with the ALC and the compression, and I've even I put them on what's supposed to be ideal, I, and then I even changed them a little bit. Um, still, I've tried to break into conversations, and they will not, no one will come back. I have called CQ and CQ. I've changed my configuration around. Um, one good thing about this guy's doing a contest. This is KU6F. Um, one good thing about contests um, on CW is a really good way to make a quick contact and get get not really good a good signal report because I always get a 599, but it's a way to get to kind of prove that it's working. So I, I did make a contact, so it is working. I've only been able to make CW contacts. Um, I changed the configuration around a little bit. I stopped using this coax 
type. It's meant for lightweight. And I'm using a little bit. I actually need like 10 feet of this is what I really want with BNC connectors. Uh, this is only like 5 feet. It's not quite long enough. But I've modified this a little bit just to see if it's that. Um, the, definitely change the SWR. I've been making contacts with uh, contesters. They seem to hear me very well. But CQ is doing nothing today. You know, this little cheap gear, it's actually not bad. It's, this wire always gets in the way. It's hard to wrap up, but this little gear is not bad, actually. You just gotta hold on to it. Okay, well I am a, an even divisible of a kilowatt. I am running 10 watts um, because I'm doing portable QRP with the Elecraft KX2. Um, I just got back from Dayton and this is the, the thing I picked up. Um, there's people behind me talking so I'm a little distracted, but um, you're up near Detroit. Did you make it down to Dayton? Yes, yes, that's good to hear. Uh, let me know if I fade out. Uh, you're right, it's not Dayton anymore. I stayed in a hotel called the Hotel Dayton up in the northwest part, and it, it felt real creepy up there. There were some characters walking around, and there was a, a strip club right around the corner, and I, didn't, I just wanted to save some money, but it took me a good 50 minutes to an hour to get into the fest. I thought getting in was such a hassle that I didn't come back the second day. But once inside, I thought it was great. Uh, I thought the food was good. There were some options. I liked the uh, Yingling beer, which you cannot get in Illinois or Missouri. Um, I, was, I liked the inside. Uh, it was a little bit, uh, I don't know, disorganized outside at the flea market. I guess that's normal. This was my very first uh, Dayton or very first Xenia ham fest. I've never been to one before and I realized that six hours is not bad so I decided to go for it. So I thought everything was good but getting in and out I had to take a shuttle. That part may turn me off. Go ahead. Okay, again a little bit of QSB but getting most of it now. Um, yeah, I guess the technical name for it is ham fest and it's never been called Dayton. Technically, I mean we all called it Dayton but the technical name, the, the trademark
Yeah, yeah, all of that's real interesting. I did, I do YouTube videos, by the way, and I'm going to put this on YouTube if you don't mind. If you want to see them, uh, there, I my my name on there is anything with wheels. So I make YouTube videos and I do portable stuff. Anyway, so uh, this video will be online. I like to kind of document everything I do. It's interesting. I saw videos on YouTube of the old Hera Arena, and it looked terrible. It looked like basically they just ran whoever owned it ran out of money and didn't update it and here's another thing if you look on the Google Maps at the Dayton area there just is not a place with a lot of parking I went to the Tulsa State Fair in Oklahoma and they have uh, they have a convention center and it's got thousands of parking spots around it it's designed for lots of cars but that Dayton area who has they have the history they, you know, they kind of have to live with, with this huge, I don't know, what is it, a classic event now. I mean, it's Dayton or Xenia, whatever, or ha it's Hamvention, so it's the, it's the place to be. And you can't just suddenly drop that in some other city and expect some other club to just pick it up and know what they're doing. So I understand, but at the same time, uh, you know, I saw people trying to carry huge boxes onto the bus, and... The buses were for kids. They're for first graders. I actually sat on the wheel well for a few seconds. I realized I'm not sitting on this thing. So I got up and went to the back of the bus, and it was just crowded. And I understand. Uh, I understand their problems. Uh, K98B. This is November 9, Yankee Oscar. By the way, I'm originally from. I live in St. Charles, Missouri. So go ahead. Okay, Tom. Uh, fine. And you're doing a pretty good job for 10 watts. What's your antenna system? Okay, this is interesting. I was walking around uh, Xenia, or Hamvention, and I saw this this thing called Pactenna. So what it is, it's just a, a 9 to 1 ballon, really, with a 41 foot wire. It's kind of a random wire. So uh, the Elocraft KX2 has an internal tuner, and so it'll tune up on pretty much anything. Um, I, I started throwing into trees, so I got this little bean bag thing, and I've been throwing up about 50 feet and so I throw a cord up and then I pull up this wire and then add a little coax to it and I'll have it it's all on the video you'll see it later I have my whole setup I'm really happy that I'm actually talking to you because I I haven't talked to anybody other than on CW on this radio so far go ahead all right well you're going from about an S1 or one and a half to an S5 a lot easier to copy you with an S5 Okay, so it's possible that um, doing QRP, you some the other person has to have a really good setup. He was running, he was running 1,000 watts, and I said I was running a, an even multiple of that at 10 watts. Um, he said I was fading in and out. The last transmission, he got most of it, but the last transmission, he only got 10, per, uh, 30 percent of it. He said so. I signed off. Uh, it was really nice. Now I know that um, I can be heard. I'm super happy. He was asking me about my antenna. I take notes and I, I'm gonna write all these notes. Every log I write notes and I keep everything. Even though my handwriting is terrible. I'm thinking about making one of those uh, log book things with little cells like a spreadsheet so I can write better and I don't have to decipher this. Any anyway, I'm super happy. Let's take a look one more time at the setup. Five foot coax. 
um, nine to one, nine to one, unun, almost vertical, and he was in Detroit and on phone, and he heard me pretty well. Um, this cordage, it kind of binds on itself and it tangles on itself, kind of makes its own knot sometimes, which is a little weird. I might need to go a little heavier with this type of cordage. It's a little too thin. Anyway, super happy. Everything's success today. It took a lot of effort to make a phone contact, but I did make one, so S-U-C-C-E-S-S. -S.